In this section, we'll explore measures of center. We're looking for values that are typical or representative of the entire data set. We'll start by the definition of mean or average. The mean is simply the sum of all the values in the data set divided by the number of values. In statistics, generally speaking, we calculate the mean for either the sample or the population. The sample mean is denoted with this symbol x bar. To calculate the sample mean, we have x bar is equal to the summation of x divided by the sample size n. This Greek symbol sigma here just means I need to add up all of the data values. So don't be scared of the notation. This sigma notation just means add up all the values. On the bottom, we have n, which is the sample size. This is a lowercase n, and that represents the sample size. To calculate the population mean, we use the Greek symbol mu. And the formula is exactly the same. We have to take the summation of the x values and divide it by the population size. Now we use a big N for the denominator because big N represents the population size. So the formula for both population mean and sample mean is essentially the same, except we use mu for the population, and x bar for the sample. Example, consider the sibling data, find the mean of the sample. To find the mean of the sample, we will use x bar is equal to the summation of the x divided by our sample size. In this case, we have one, two, three, four, five individuals surveyed so the sample size is 5. And so we can add up the values. 0 plus 2 plus 1 plus 5 plus 7. And divided by our sample size 5. This simplifies to 15 over 5. And we have this is equivalent to 3. So the average is 3. Example, find the mean of this sample data, the number of pounds lost or gained over the Thanksgiving holiday. Some people are on diets so they lose weight, while others enjoy their Thanksgiving break and might gain a few pounds. Now let's calculate our sample mean. Again, we'll use the symbol x bar since we're considering this as a sample. If this was a population, then we would use mu x bar is equal to the summation of our data values divided by our sample size. And in this case, we have, we have that the sample size is 7. So we'll take negative 3 plus 5 plus 0 plus 7 plus 5 plus 9 minus 1 and divide that by 7. The numerator simplifies to 22. And now we have 22 divided by 7, and that is equal to 22 over 7 is approximately 3.14. So we're going to round this to about 3.14. On average, these individuals gain 3.14 pounds over the Thanksgiving holiday. Let's look at our statistics calculator and try some values out. I'm going to enter 45, 47, 48, 49, 55. So I have five values, and if you look at the values, it is clear that the average is going to be somewhere between 45 and 55. So we'll calculate the average. And the average is 
48.8, which is between 45 and 55. Now, let's say we have an extreme outlier. Let's suppose instead of 55, we'll replace it with 1 million, and we'll see what happens to the average. This is an extreme value compared to the rest, so I know the average is going to pull towards the larger end. So we'll calculate, and the average does get pulled towards the right because we have an extreme. Now let's try this again, and instead of changing the 55, let's change the 45 into a zero. What's going to happen to the average? Is it going to get smaller, stay the same, or get larger? We'll calculate the average and the average gets smaller. The mean gets moved towards the direction of the outlier. Now look at the median. The median is 48. And if I were to change this number back to 45 and calculate the median, it's still 48. If I were to change the 55 into a really, really huge number, the median is still 48. It doesn't move at all because the median is just the middle number. So the median is not affected by those extremes. What are the disadvantages of the mean? The mean is affected by outliers. The advantages of the mean. It takes into account all values in the data set and it is commonly used and easy to calculate for small data sets. If our distribution is normal or bell-shaped, the mean, median, and mode tend to be in the center of the distribution. If there is an outlier that is extremely small in comparison to the rest of the data, the mean tends to pull towards that direction. If there is a number that is large compared to the rest of the data, the average tends to pull towards that direction. The mean is affected by outliers. It tends to move in the direction of outliers. The advantages of the median. It is more robust or resistant to outliers. The disadvantages of the median. It only takes into account one or two values and ignores all the other values. What do I use and when do I use it? Well, that depends on the shape of the distribution. If the data is not symmetric, if it's skew left or skew right, then the median is preferred as a measure of center or typical value. If the data is bell-shaped or normal, then we usually report the mean since it takes all values in the data set into account rather than just the middle values and it is an unbiased estimator. We also have other measures of center. The mid-range is equal to the highest value plus the lowest value divided by 2 and this one might have some problems because it only takes into account two values. So it's going to be affected by those outliers since the highest value could be an outlier or the lowest value could be an outlier. The mode is the most common occurring value in the data set and is usually easy to find. Example, the following data represents the number of O-ring failures on the shuttle Columbia for its 17 flights prior to its fatal flight. Find the mode of O-ring failures. The mode is clearly zero because that's the most common repeating data value, so the mode is zero. In this example, we want to find the mode. I want you to take a quick second to locate the mode. If you look carefully, it doesn't appear to have any mode. There's no number that is repeated more than once. So in this case, there is no mode.
The data here represents the location of injuries that require a physical therapist for rehabilitation. Determine the mode on location of injury. It looks like back is the mode. And the mode is most commonly used for this type of data, categorical data. The mode is most useful for categorical data because we can find out what the most common value is relatively quickly.